All right, in this video, I'm going to try and answer the question, is 5G meaningless in Australia? That is to say, does upgrading from 4G to 5G make much of a difference to anything in the experience of using your phone? Then you might ask, well, what is it specifically about Australia that matters compared to, say, the USA? And so one thing you need to know is that there's almost two kinds of 5G. There's the regular spectrum 5G that sort of uses spectrum somewhere between half and six gigahertz. And then you've got the millimeter wave 5G, which is anything above six gigahertz. Now, most of the big performance claims around 5G are usually centered on performance from millimeter wave. And plenty of YouTubers have shown that uh, you need to have line of sight of the tower. You can just walk behind a tree or around a corner and all of a sudden your millimeter wave speeds drop away dramatically and, and that's fine. That's not the issue that we have in Australia. The real issue we have in Australia is that Apple has something like 58% market share, uh, nearly 60%. That means that they're selling the bulk of mobile phones, uh, smartphones and 5G phones in Australia. So six, six out of 10 people, three out of five people have uh, an Apple phone. And the thing about the models of Apple's phones in Australia is that they don't do millimeter wave. They do 5G, so that half to six gigahertz spectrum is getting utilized, but the really high speed stuff, millimeter wave, isn't there. You can't buy it in a phone from Apple or its resellers in Australia. So that would dramatically reduces the performance capabilities that you can receive from your 5G upgrade. Uh, so let's find out how much of a performance improvement you actually get from upgrading from a 4G iPhone to a 5G iPhone. So to test that, I've got an iPhone 11 here, an iPhone 11 Pro Max, and I've got an iPhone 13 Pro Max. I did a couple of tests. The first test I'm going to do is go to the local Telstra telephone exchange because I wanted to find a location that has the absolute best performance you can get. So I want a line of sight with the tower and to know that the tower has the best possible performance. And I would find the best spot for speed for both 4G and then 5G and compare the difference in the speeds between the two to see how much of an upgrade you get. So after quite a few tests, I found a spot, uh, the fastest spot for both 4G and it turned out 5G was this location right here, halfway uh, across the road. Don't worry, it's quite safe, but it's on this island in the middle of the road with line of sight to what looks like this aerial here. Let's dive straight into the results. And the first result is for the 4G and it's 645 megabits download. 63 megabits away so basically a 10 to 1 ratio to and from but 645 megabits that's an amazing level of performance out of 4g and it's actually hard for me to come up with scenarios where you need very much more speed than that from a mobile phone but that's not the question we're trying to answer today what we're trying to find out is 5g any faster without the benefit of millimeter wave so here are the 5g results and there you go 1,202 megabits per second download, about 60 megabits upload. So roughly a 20 to one upload to download ratio, but look at that headline figure, 1.2 gigabits. That is basically twice as fast as the 4G result from the same location. So that answers our question. 5G without the benefit of millimeter wave in Australia can give you up to twice the performance of 4G in the same location. So obviously that's pretty much the best theoretical maximum performance you'll get out of an iPhone in Australia using 5G. But what about in less desirable locations where you've still got 5G reception uh, and how does it compare against a 4G phone? So I tested five by five and 4G speeds at these five locations, here, 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 and here, and here are the results. So to analyze these results, I took the average of the 5G speeds and the 4G speeds. And so the 5G gets you uh, just under 400 megabits per second average over the five locations and 4G gives you about 285 megabits. And that's a pretty good sign. 5G will give you approximately 40% more performance on average over the five locations I tested anyway. And 40% improvement is, is nothing to be sneezed at. That's pretty good. But if you look at these figures closely, you'll see of the five samples, in two of the situations, the 4G speed is actually faster than the 5G speed. This might be a problem, or you might think it's a problem, but in reality, even 149 megabits is still way more speed than 
you could ever want on a phone. And if on average you're getting faster 5G speeds, well, I, that's a sacrifice I'd be willing to make. In that example, location 5, which was on top of a car park, I did notice that after I took the sample, that as I stared out across the street, about 80 meters away, I could see the Telstra uh, tower, that is the, the 4G antennas pointing straight at me, and I could see, oh yes, that's why I'm getting such a good signal. Presumably the, those aerials only did 4G and not 5G, and that's why in that circumstance it, it was better performance for 4G. The other circumstance, circumstance two, I think I was only getting about three bars of 5G compared to, yes, four, four bars for 4G. And so there's a little bit more performance. And in fact, the phone did jump back and forth between four and 5G at location two. To sum up, it's a bit of a, a mixed bag. Generally speaking, 5G is faster, 40% um, faster on average, and, and in some circumstances, nearly twice as fast in, in absolutely ideal circumstances. So yes, 5G is definitely a technology upgrade that's worthwhile doing, uh, and I guess it's gonna happen no matter what. Eventually, you'll replace your phone, and eventually that phone will be a 5G phone. You won't get a choice in it. Um, but generally speaking, it's a good upgrade. As far as the millimeter wave goes, uh, there's <laughs> it's a bit disappointing that Australia misses out. Um, but given that the maximum speed you'll get are when you basically have line of sight for the towers, and when you have line of sight for the towers, I can get 1.2 gigabits on 5G, it doesn't feel like I'm really missing out on much, given that it's, five, it's very hard to find use cases for, for a mobile phone using 1.5 gigabits anyway. All right, I hopefully you enjoyed this uh, video. I enjoyed making it, so if you liked it, please, please give me a like. And uh, if you've got anything to comment, I definitely want to have a discussion about this to find out what other people's opinions are. So please make a comment below. All right. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.